for the dark hours when you dare not close your eyes. No sleep. It's the No Sleep Podcast. No sleep. Featuring stories from Reddit.com's No Sleep Forum. No sleep. Join us as the sleepless hours tick past. Our next tale is entitled The Cornfield, written by Karina Young and read by Ginny Sanders. Some people say revenge is a dish best served cold, while others insist revenge is only to be taken on those that truly deserve it. I say avoid it. Avoid it at all costs. I lived in the middle of nowhere and had a half-hour walk to school every day past loads of fields and down some long, windy lanes. In those days, I was bullied badly by a girl named Sarah, and one day when we were twelve we both got detention for fighting after she humiliated me in front of the whole class. By the time we'd left detention and started our walk home, the sun had already started setting and the dark was closing in. We walked in silence except for the odd mumble of disapproval from Sarah bitching at me for getting her detention. Already pissed off from the years of bullying, ready to crack from the fight earlier that day, it didn't take much of her moaning to send me over the edge. As I noticed that we were walking past an old cornfield, a plan formulated so quickly in my mind that I blurted out before I could stop myself. Did you see that? Shut up, freak. Don't talk to me. No, seriously, Sarah, look. She turned slowly to look where I was pointing. And the cornfield, of course, remained still, and she scoffed. There's nothing there. Shut up and keep walking or I'm going without you. Just as she turned away, a small gust of wind moved the corn, so it looked as if someone was moving through the field. Look, no, there's somebody there. So what? It's probably just the farmer. At this time of night? I doubt it. I think we should go and have a look. Sarah was getting exasperated. She wanted to leave and I was losing her. I could tell. I decided now was the time to reel her in. Fine, you can leave. But I'm going in to check and see what's going on. I understand if you're too scared. I started to walk off. I felt her thinking it over, realizing it was better to come with me than be left alone in the dark. She followed. I strolled boldly up to the field. My plan was simple. Get her in hide from her, and then jump out on her. Just freak her out a little. Nice and easy. I had done the hard part already of getting her in there. The corn came to well above our heads, and within a few seconds we were completely immersed, cut off from the rest of the world. I felt Sarah tense up almost immediately, and I knew this would work. Maybe this wasn't a good idea. She was squirming now. It'll be fine, unless... It's ghosts or drug dealers or something. I smiled to myself in the dark, knowing I was just feeding her fears. I waited until we were a few more feet in, then I slowed my pace, letting her take the lead. Before long, I distanced myself enough to break away from her. I stopped walking, trying to stay as silent as possible. It didn't take her long to realize I wasn't there anymore. Amy? She shouted. Where the fuck are you? Stop playing tricks. If you don't come back right now, I'm going to leave you in here. I heard the fear in her voice. She was definitely starting to crack. Just a few more minutes and she'd really be bricking it. I had to stifle a laugh to stop from giving the game away. I realized I could step this game up and so bent down and picked up a clod of dirt as quietly as I could. I launched it above the corn and it came down a few feet away, wrestling the branches as it did. The plan worked perfectly. I heard Sarah give a startled gasp. Amy, I am leaving right now. I heard her make her way through the corn and thought I'd better make my move now before it was too late. I waited until she was close and readied myself. Moments later, I jumped out on her screaming as loud as I could, but something wasn't right. No one was there. Had I just been played by Sarah? I had to give her credit if she had, I mean, I just didn't think she was that smart. As I stood there wondering what the hell had just happened, I heard a blood-curdling scream. There was no denying it, it was Sarah, and she wasn't playing. 
I shouted for her, ran in the direction of the scream, but nothing. It was too dark to see anything anymore, but I couldn't hear anything either. I fumbled my way through the field, hearing my own blood pumping in my ears. Sarah? I whispered. Something was telling me that shouting wasn't a good idea anymore. I heard movement up ahead and stopped. I was just about to run forward, sure that I'd found her, when I heard a thud. Then the laugh. Whatever I forget in life, that laugh will never be one of them. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end, every muscle tensed. I knew that I needed to get away. I ran as fast and as quietly as I could away from that laugh. I didn't know where I was anymore, but it didn't matter, as long as I wasn't there. It felt like forever, but finally I broke through the corn and fell onto the concrete of the road. I'd come out exactly where we'd gone in, only now, there was just me. I ran for home, not stopping even though I couldn't breathe. I went straight to bed, ignoring the questions of my parents, hoping that waking up in the morning I'd go into class, and there she'd be, surrounded by all of her friends, laughing at me like always. But it's 10 p.m. now, and there's a knock on the door, and the questions start. 11 p.m. The police arrive, more questions. And 11.30 p.m. The search starts. A search that wouldn't end until two months later in August, when the body of a young girl is found bound and mutilated in a cornfield. Some people say revenge is a dish best served cold, while others insist revenge is only to be taken on those that truly deserve it. I say avoid it, because living with the guilt is something you never really get used to.